um, I recently finished watching the episode for, I don't remember what week this is. <laughs> Basically, after Woman Tell All, this episode where it's the final three fantasy suites. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, just finished watching that. I don't know how I feel about certain things in certain situations, especially coming off the wings of last night's Woman Tell All episode and how Sierra and um, Teddy sort of made those cryptic comments about, <laughs> about like, we know what happens and um, hmm. so anyway, the view from where I sit has been rather gray. As you can see, it's very overcast, it's rainy, and as I'm watching this episode where they're in Iceland and, you know, it's <sighs> just feeling the moods. Oh, also wearing my Deathly Hallows nerding out with my sweatshirt. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hi YouTube friends. <laughs> uh, it's Trish here. And welcome to my little corner of the internet, where today I'm talking about that episode, um, Fantasy Suites. Yay! Uh, how do we want to tackle this? Because obviously the main topic of discussion would be the last 10 minutes of the episode. Um, so I'll try to do a general overview of the rest of it, because... I mean, you know, he spent time with each of the girls. And basically what was happening is Rachel, yeah, Rachel was up first and um, Susie's sort of beginning her spiral. And we start hearing in her ITMs that sex is a very um, intimate part of a relationship and it's sort of the ultimate form of connectivity and so she puts a very high value on it and she does not sleep with anyone unless she is in a committed relationship which perfectly fine to each their own as the episode progresses we start to hear her get a little I don't want to say judgy because Gabby will tell her like later on that um she would prefer Clayton really explore all three relationships to the fullest extent because then if she is chosen at the end of it, she knows that she is chosen at the end of it. And um, <laughs> Susie does not agree. Um, anyway, so Rachel's one-on-one -on -one is going down a volcano, which is an yeah, going down an inactive volcano. And it's like 400 feet. They kept on talking about that. Uh, cool experience. And we start to hear her talk about how she really needs to hear from Clayton where he is at before she feels comfortable moving forward. Sort of hinting that that she needs to hear the opening like the openness of I'm falling for you and stuff like that before she goes to fantasy suites and uh, she does end up getting that during the nighttime portion and they go to fantasy suites and they have a lovely time together and a lovely morning together and it's just oh, it's lovely um and then when Gabby's on her one-on-one -on -one date there's this interesting scene that they do with Susie and it starts to sort of, it starts to rub me the wrong way, honestly. Um, I don't know at what point during Gabby's one-on-one -on -one time, probably going into the nighttime portion, they have this very Alice in Wonderland-like scene. Um, they have an upward view shot down a spiral staircase 
And then they have a shot of her walking on the spiral staircase and talking about how she's spiraling. And I was like, this is just a little too on the nose. And it just felt strange. But at that point in the episode, I was like, oh, Susie, you poor girl. These producers just made you do this really thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just sort of, I felt as if she was just being coerced into having to do these things, but her feelings were genuine. She's really, as time is, she, she is that contestant, as time is passing, she's really getting in her head, but she's also trying to keep herself at bay because she's like, I know I'm making assumptions and it's possible that none of this is actually even happening. And of course they're pairing it with scenes of, yeah, no, all of that is actually happening. Gabby's one-on-one -on -one time is dune buggies on black sand, black sand beaches and then they have a conversation in this diner and over there Clayton sort of brings up that it's because she has been so open and forthcoming that he it's allowed him to then sort of match that and open up and they are where they are today because of her which is super sweet. Um, they go into the nighttime portion and he just sort of furthers that by telling her that he is falling for her. So yay. <laughs> um, and she comes back from her one-on-one -on -one time and, you know, she's talking about it a little bit with the girls and she does sort of <laughs> I feel like Gabby's is one of those people that battles to fill silence. <laughs> So she did tell them that, yeah, we ended up staying in this yurt and, you know, it was, it was a small yurt, but it had this giant bed with all these, like, fluffy pillows and blankets. And I was like, oh, Gabby, <laughs> maybe a little too much detail <laughs> at this point. Poor Susie is just combusting internally. And um, she does get up and leave the room. And I thought she was getting up to go get ready for her one-on-one -on -one date. But no, she was getting up because like shit was just getting to her. And okay, this is where it really starts. I don't know. It's just weird to me. She goes out into the hallway and leans against the wall and like leans her head against the door jam. And it feels ultra posy. Like before, I could sort of explain in a way, okay, producers are sort of making her do this, and it's possible the producers are making her do that as well, but that whole sequence just felt very, it felt very put on. And then in her ITM, she's talking about how she would not get, be able to get past if he had been intimate with one or the other girls that like she just she doesn't get it because if she is the one chosen at the end then she would hope that he is not exploring physical relationships with the other two and she starts like f folding a tissue and sort of dabbing at her eyes towards the end of the ITM and it just it fell off so this is where I begin to wonder, is she just putting all of this on? Is she creating an issue so that she can get out of this situation and be in line for a bachelorette? Like I can't help myself from having the thoughts. I'm sorry. I mean, she seems like a sweet and lovely girl and I'm not saying that she's not. It's just... I'm starting to wonder, especially because this is now becoming such a big deal for her. But then I'm echoing back to her hometown and how she was talking with her dad that she has very high standards for men because of how her dad treats her mom and her. And so she doesn't expect anything less of that, which is why she hasn't really had that many relationships. And 
And I can understand her point of view. She wants to be chosen and respected. But she is, I think, not understanding that there are two other people still there and he is exploring every relationship. So she goes into her one-on-one -on -one date. The daytime portion is like the spa thing where they're going from cold to hot to cold to hot to cold to hot. And then a body scrub. <laughs> so I I personally kind of want to experience this at one point. Um, but she, I think, was trying to be a good sport. But she just was not feeling especially all the cold portions of the thing. So she's just like, okay, when is this part over? <laughs> can we get to the next part uh so that was kind of funny and um what were they talking about after all of that I will say that when they got to the outdoor pool with rocks in it <laughs> where they end up kissing underneath the waterfall over there but sort of before that they had a very fun relationship um he's sort of hanging on to her as she's walking them out there and then after the kissing when they're sort of coming back and and coming out they were laughing about something and anyway it just felt like a really fun connection so that was really nice to see but it all goes way, way down <laughs> during the nighttime portion of the date. 